everyone, welcome to our Facebook Live. <laughs> this is the topic for today. Help, my kid is so callous. Are you inside here already? We are a few seconds early. Let's just see if um, we should start. Okay, we are live now. Okay, I shall not um, delay us too much. So let's start. Today is going to be quite a little bit heavy, I would think. That's why I need to sit down and relax and talk to you in a very calm manner. Okay, right. I hope you're relaxed too at home and uh, on your sofa. And um, So this is a topic that bothers a lot of us, whether it's teachers or parents or tutors. Um, children tend to be careless. I mean, they're children, right? There's a, there's a lot of... Uh, um, uh, daily things that annoys us uh, a lot. Like for example, why do they uh, don't forget where their pencils are? Why do they leave their colour pencils everywhere on the floor? Why is it that they will keep writing um, transfer errors? Like maybe it is three, but they write it as four. Uh, it should be plus. They know it's plus, but then when they write, they end up writing a minus and things like that. So. These are the things that irk us uh, a lot, right? Uh, as parents, as teachers, as tutors. So there are many reasons why children uh, tend to make this kind of mistakes. And uh, today I'm going to run through some of them with you. All right? So there's many, many factors, which is why I want to um, write down as many as possible here for you so you understand what the kid is going through. But like I said, today is going to be a very heavy topic meaning I will not cover the, um, the easy part. The easy part meaning um, it is easy for you to solve them. Okay? I, won't, I won't cover the easy, uh, easy to solve uh, problems with you because I believe you came here to learn something new. Right? So I'm going to touch on as much scientific knowledge as possible so that you can really bring home, uh, you're already at home, <laughs> so that you can really learn something really meaningful. Okay? So, According to difficulty level of, uh, of solution, how to make your child less careless, or rather, how do I put it? How to, how to fix the carelessness in your child, okay? If they're just distracted, remove the distraction, right? Simple as that, right? So if they're distracted in the classroom, maybe the teacher can change their seat, uh, put them uh, further away from the window, put them right under your nose, you know, that kind of thing. These are what teachers usually do. If at home they are distracted by the TV, switch them off, put them facing the walls, close the window, close the door, you know, things like that. Uh, you can even try something like this. You know, the horse blindfold. <laughs> the horses that wear this blindfold that covers the side, okay, this will actually make them uh, less distracted, less easily distracted. Otherwise, you can have a table lamp on the, on a table, lamp on the table. Okay, switch off all the lights around in the, the, the rest of the room. Only leave the lights on, on the work that he needs to focus on. That will help the child focus as well, okay? Buy those lights, that table lights that is good for the eyes because the rest of the place is dim and the table lamp is there. Uh, they'll be able to focus very well, okay? But make sure to protect the eyes as well. If you're disinterested, you will need to look at my previous two videos, okay? My previous two Facebook Live, which is also in our Facebook feed. Okay, uh, also on our YouTube channel, if you are interested, uh, bit.ly uh, slash I like YouTube. <laughs> okay, but anyway, you can find it on Facebook Live, uh, Facebook feed. Okay, so if you are disinterested, there's a lot of things that we can do to help them. Uh, like, for example, change the way we praise them, um, change the way we reward them, and uh, even uh, change the way we punish them if you want to put it that way, okay? There's many, many ways to move a disinterested child towards uh, interest, towards intrinsic motivation. Watch my other two Facebook Live. So that one can be fixed, but it needs two Facebook videos <laughs> to fix it. Complacency. I put it here because um, complacency and overthinking can be a form of attitude, and attitudes are not easy to fix. Okay, complacency meaning they are very arrogant, uh, they feel that they are very good. Um, sometimes it might be a result of overpraising. Okay, overpraising. Uh, what happens when you overpraise your kids? Uh, they will have a boosted uh, uh, 
confidence in themselves that they actually know how to do things. And also, this could be because of their impulsiveness that they think they know, but actually they don't know. Okay? And the thing is that a lot of children think they know, even adults, right? even you and I, we think we know, but actually we don't know. So that will be a problem that we need to fix. But that is an attitude problem. And today we're not looking at attitude problem. Even overthinking is also an attitude problem. So why, why is that so? Because overthinking can be a, a form of um, anxiety. They, they feel that it's not good enough. They feel that they can improve. And uh, so uh, this can be a, a result of uh, stress. Okay, so that is one of the, the factor, uh, stress. So, we're not dealing with all of that. And a poor understanding of concept, so the solution for this will be send them to my centre. <laughs> okay, uh, we run an enrichment centre so we can help your kids. We can actually enhance on their learning ability for you, not just teaching them on what they need to know in English, math and science. We also, at the same time, enhance on their learning ability and we motivate them as well. So these two things, we are working actively on it, okay? So if you need help in your kids' understanding of concept, send them to us, okay? Enough marketing. <laughs> Let's learn the serious thing here. So the last two over here, I would say it is the most difficult for you to fix because they have got to do with the neurological processes. But how do you identify that your child is having these issues? Okay, you can't. The reason why I, um, I'm sharing this with you is because a lot of parents seem to be pulling their hair out and say, why are my kids so careless? And they will come to me and question. And because I am their kid's tutor, because I teach also, so uh, when they come to me and ask me things like that, I, I try to explain to them in a very scientific way, sometimes in a layman's way. I find it very difficult to put it across to the parents that a deeper understanding of their children's uh, weaknesses is required. And uh, because we always chat outside the center uh, after class, and usually I have another class to run to, so we don't have that time to go that in depth into explaining what's happening to the child. Why is the child struggling in this uh, situation? which is why I thought this would be a very good platform to share, okay? So, inattentiveness, visual processing disorder. And this too will lead to your child being careless. So, what are they? What are the causes of inattentiveness? You may have heard of ADHD, okay? So, when I say ADHD, oh, a lot of uh, alarm bell comes out. My child is not ADHD. No, no, no. I'm not saying your child is ADHD. I'm saying... Inattentiveness is one of the um, symptom. Is one of the symptom for ADHD. Okay. So why do I say that? Because uh, there's actually um, you can say two types of ADHD. One is the inattentiveness dominant ADHD. The other one is the hyperactivity dominant ADHD. Okay, so which means even if your child is not a hyper kind, they jump around on the sofa, run around, uh, couldn't sit still, the teacher keeps complaining, he keeps walking around the classroom, that kind, even if your child is not like that, your child might still be diagnosed as ADHD because of his or her inattentiveness. Okay, so um, long time ago, I think about five, six years ago, ADHD doesn't include both. There is actually another category called ADD. Okay? So ADD is um, the one that describes pr uh, predominantly the inattentive, inattentive part. But they script it and decided to lump the two together and just... Um, so there's no more ADD. There is only ADHD. And ADHD has got two different types of dominance. Okay? One is the uh, hyperactivity dominance. The other one is the inattentiveness dominance. So, what are the causes for inattentiveness? Uh, one of the causes would be emotional stress. I would say this is, again, uh, easy to fix in a way because you just need to remove the emotional stress. They will be able to pay attention more, okay? So these are just some of the causes, okay? We are not going to the 
the neurological part yet, right? So these are the causes that we might be able to solve. Conflict, okay, when there's conflict, when there's anger, emotional stress, these are the same thing, okay, talking about how, uh, how affected inside here the child is that causes inattentiveness, they couldn't focus. Even when we quarrel with our husband or quarrel with our wife, we can't pay attention to a lot of things too, isn't it? We make mistakes. So I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. Prolonged exposure to screen time. We might think that, okay, watching too much uh, movies and uh, violent movies uh, uh, and things like that are actually going to make our children more violent. Actually, there's no research saying that. Uh, prolonged exposure to screen time in terms of violent movies actually has no correlation to the violence tendency of children. It is something else entirely. The research does not support that. But what the research supports is that overexposure, prolonged exposure, depending on age, okay? For under two, if it's more than half an hour, it's too much. From two to four, if it's more than 45 minutes, it's too much. If it's uh, four to six, if it's more than one hour, it's too much. There is actually a guideline. You can source it out. Okay, so basically, my rule of thumb for parents, I will usually tell them, nothing more than half an hour per stretch. Okay, so perhaps you can let them watch an afternoon cartoon for half an hour, and that's the maximum already. I would say regardless of age. Why do I say that? Because um, screen time is very stimulating. It has a lot of visual and audio uh, movement and stimulation, and bing, 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 everything comes together. So the children's brain is like a sponge. They absorb very, very fast. They get very, very affected very, very easily. We can watch movies for two hours, no problem. Okay, because we are old brains, you know, <laughs> old brains. We are, we are brains that is not as easily stimulated because our neurons, uh, our, 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 our circuits are not that strong, as young as the kids. The kids are younger, easily stimulated. So don't go anything more than half an hour as a general guideline. It's easier to remember, nothing more than half an hour. If they are beyond, let's say, P4, 10 years and above already, you can bring them to watch a movie, no problem, but teach them how to calm down, teach them how to control their emotions. Okay? That will be easier for them. Bring their awareness back to their body after, uh, let's say, a, a stimulating show like Avengers, you know, that kind of uh, genre. <clears throat> what are the symptoms of inattentiveness? So if you think of uh, kids who are inattentive, so what are the things that you will see? Obviously, you will see that they have limited attention span. They can't focus for long. So teachers, you know these kids, those that cannot focus on, okay? Inattentiveness, limited attention span. And uh, they are very forgetful, they forget this, they forget that, they don't know where their pencils are, they don't know where their erasers are, they don't know what are the homework given, uh, is it page 10 or is it page 9, how many pages in total, they just can't remember anything. Okay, they procrastinate. Not because they can't make a decision, but because they don't remember the details in it, because they can't remember details, they cannot make a good decision. And because they can't focus, they cannot follow the, the logical thought process that they are actually going through. They just get mixed up. They were thinking, okay, so uh, I have this, 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 and then uh, so I need the, eh? what was I thinking about? And it gets confused. <laughs> so they end up procrastinating for unknown reasons just because they cannot remember the details in the first place. It's a mess inside. Nothing goes linear. It just goes ta -ta 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 inside. Okay? So they are careless. Okay, they, they tend to forget, they are careless, they lose things, and they are messy, they are very, very disorganized, their whole table is a mess, uh, they will never be able to find anything because everything is messed up. They are always in a daze. Whenever you talk to them, you can call them multiple, multiple times like, David, David, are you here, David? <laughs> you need to call them multiple times, okay, because they are usually um, somewhere else. Uh, they sidetrack because um, they, they, they couldn't focus on one track. Just like I said just now, they, their thought processes are all like that. So they sidetrack very easily. They were like, oh, oh, we were talking about that just now. Oh, yeah, 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 that, 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 that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They sidetrack very, very easily. And uh, they're reluctant to work. Why is that so? Because any, anything that involves the brain processing that requires them to think for a long period of time, it's very tiring. So you imagine you want to go up the hill, there is one goal ahead of you to climb up to the peak, right? 
but you get lost in the middle, you sidetrack, you go this path, you go that path, and then you get lost over there, and then you need to walk this way again, and this entire process of reaching that goal is so tough. So you imagine to a child that has inattentiveness issue, doing work, reaching the ultimate goal, completing the homework is extremely, extremely tough for them. That's why they avoid. They avoid the work that you want them to do that involves mental processing. So, why am I telling you all this? Because these are very good information to help you understand the struggle that your child might be going through. If your child is just slightly careless, it is not repetitive, it is not causing a huge problem, they don't fall into this category, that's fine. Okay, you're in a good, um, you're in a good condition, <laughs> you're in a good situation. But if your child displays, okay, according to the Psychology uh, uh, Society, uh, APA, if you have any of the six symptoms over here, there's nine altogether, any of the six here, and your child can be diagnosed with ADHD. Okay? Any of the six here, and they can be diagnosed as ADHD. Of course, the degree of it will vary, right? And you need to go to a, a, a real psychologist to get them diagnosed. So, it's not a matter of whether you want them to get diagnosed or not. There isn't a need for that. Really, there isn't a need for them to be diagnosed. I'm sure a lot of, a lot of you uh, might agree with me. Why do you want your child to be diagnosed, right? Because uh, it would be better if we can have strategies for them. The thing is that if you get them diagnosed, you get professional help. Uh, they will teach you exactly how to help your kids, right? But don't worry, I'm here, <laughs> so I'm going to help you as much as uh, this screen, this uh, logistics is possible. So I'll share some strategies with you on how to help your kids. But before we go on, you need to understand these are things that they cannot help. They cannot solve easily. It is not a matter of you scolding them. It is not a matter of you uh, um, grounding them or punishing them that they can change. They can't. It is beyond them. It is inside here, okay, that is hindering their progress, that is making them very careless. So, Daddy, Mommy, please be very forgiving to your kids if they show six of these symptoms out of this nine, or even less, even just a few of them. Come together, they will irk you a lot, but please be patient. Your child is not finding this easy as well, okay? So, what are the treatments? Good news, chest helps. <laughs> Okay, why do chess help? Chess allows your child to strategize. As they are strategizing the next move, they think about uh, what your move is and uh, absorbing what your move is into my move in order to move to the next move and uh, what happens after I move. So this strategizing actually helps to develop this part of the brain, the frontal lobe. So when uh, you develop this part of the brain, it actually helps the child uh, to, to become better at forward thinking thus helping them to be more organized, okay? So this part of the development is very, very important, this frontal lobe part. So chess helps in that sense, okay? It develops their strategizing ability, which is the development of the frontal lobe of the brain. Another thing that helps, sports, okay? So I have heard a lot of parents who go through this before that uh, their child is not good enough for DSA, uh, therefore, they drop the spot by P5 so they can concentrate on PSLE and I've heard a lot of this kind that uh, they drop the spot that the kid likes just because they can focus on PSLE. So I'm telling you, uh, if you have done that, it's okay, no problem. Let, allow your child to pick up the spot again, please. If you have not done that, please do not do that because spots can help not just inattentiveness. Sports can help your child focus a lot better, okay? In fact, young athletes who perform well in sports has a high correlation to very good results, okay? This is scientifically proven. Young athletes, athletes, children who do well in sports in one particular sport or rather in all sports or anything, as long as they have one source of uh, focus. It doesn't have to be sports, it can be an art, it can be a skill, anything, okay? Piano skill or whatever. 
as long as they have one passion. If you refer to my previous video, you will come with the word, you, you will come across the word passion. Okay, as long as they have one passion, their results will coincide. Okay, so there is one study that actually shows sports, high sports performance correlates with good results. Okay, so if your child already has one sport that they are very, very interested in, please continue. Don't stop just because of PSLE. PSLE is not the end. Okay, it's not the end of an academic pursuit. It is a learning journey. Remember that. Okay, if you can use this learning journey to enhance, to, to talk, to, to reinforce the concept of learning to your kids, they will be able to love learning a lot more. Right? Uh, why do I put example territorial games, net games, and target games? Okay, what exactly are they? Territorial games are things like football, uh, floorball, uh, basketball. They require you to enter another uh, the opponent's territory in order to attack, in order to score a goal. Okay, so that's territorial game. Basically, they just run everywhere, like football. Okay, football is a very good example of territorial games. So uh, this territorial games uh, encourages a lot of strategizing. For example, where do I run to in order to get the the pass for my friend? Okay, so territorial game trains visual perception. Okay, and it trains strategizing. Right, all these are very good frontal lobe development activities. Net games. Okay, net games is the same like badminton, uh, table tennis. So the positioning is very important. The small little movement on table tennis, how you actually move your body and uh, how you strategize, how you attack, how you defend. So net games actually needs a lot of strategizing as well. A lot of small little movement. Okay, and if we talk about real small movement, we talk about target games like golf, archery. These are even better because it trains breath, okay? So for example, like archery, you need to be able to breathe at the right time in order to shoot, okay? Like shooting is the same thing. If you are um, fathers, you will know you go to NS, okay? So shooting requires a lot of breath control. So these are very good for uh, ADHD kids, okay? But for inattentiveness, it trains your focus in terms of uh, how you control your breath, bodily awareness, okay? So even in golf, you need to think about a lot of factors, like for the wind factor, uh, uh, the grass, the type of grass, the turf, okay? So all these things comes together. It requires a lot of brain process. So these are very, very good activities for your kids. Uh, away from English, math, science, and Chinese, they can develop their frontal lobe much, much better. Meditation, okay? Nothing to do with religion. It doesn't have to. Uh, meditation can just be a focus on the mind. So all you need to do is tell your child, focus here, okay? How do you focus here? You can't even see it, right? Okay, so it is a mind thing. So all they need to do is just close their eyes every night, try one minute, first time, okay? Just try one minute, just focus over here. Just think about here, nothing else. Don't need to do anything else, just think about here. Okay, just close your eyes and think here. Sit up straight and think here. So for one minute, so you time your child. So one minute is out, well done, good night, son. That's all. Second day, two minutes. Okay, if two minutes too long, one minute, 30, mi 30 seconds, up to you to discuss with your child and they might eventually like it. It becomes a, like a bonding session because you are there, right? You're there for the one minute being silent with him or her, two minutes being silent with him or her, three minutes, okay, and so on. So the third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, by the time one week later, your child might be able to do seven minutes of concentration over here. It will improve accordingly, okay? So... This is very important because it brings awareness, it, it helps your child to focus and this will actually help them reduce their carelessness in their work and increase their attentiveness, okay? So from here, you can move on to the focus on breath, okay? That would be the second stage, but let's try just here first, okay? Other activities that you can play, so this is, um, HBL is coming to an end soon. But I Love Learning is going to start e ILEC classes soon. Yay, so we will entertain your kids for you. <laughs> okay, so um, what else can you do without HBL? Your kid is going to be, Mommy, Daddy, I want to do this, I want to do that. So you've got nothing for them to do. Please go online and click Buy Jigsaw Puzzle. 100 pieces, 200 pieces, 500 pieces, up to you. It depends on how old your kid is. Okay, so by the time P3, they should be able to handle 500 pieces easily. If they cannot, try 250 first. Why is Jigsaw Puzzle good? Because it actually focuses their attention onto the sides and onto the colours and onto the attention to details, okay? You get what I mean. Jigsaw Puzzle is very, very good. The other one, Word Search. Word Search doesn't involve colour. Jigsaw Puzzle is better. So if you ask me to choose between Word Search and uh, Jigsaw Puzzle, I will highly recommend Jigsaw Puzzle, okay? So these are how you can help 
children with inattentiveness issue. Don't panic, it can be cured, right? Let's just try all these activities as much as possible and your child will get better. The next thing I want to share with you, a even more tricky in order to help, in order to cure in a, in, a, in a way, in order to treat, okay, which is the visual processing disorder. So why do I share this? Because some children can be so careless, no matter how much you scold them, how much you, 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 you tell them to focus, focus, you hit them, you, no matter what you do, they just couldn't. They just couldn't, they, they, they just had this transfer error. 3 becomes 4, 4 becomes 5, plus becomes minus, divide becomes times, and uh, they will forever be not able to write a complete sentence without any errors. Those are the kind of kids that we're talking about. So uh, I, have, I have a few of them that I've taught in my lifetime, uh, Precious Gem, because they, they, they really open up my mind and, uh, to, to help me realise that there are a lot more things that we teachers can do for these kids. Okay, so I have been researching a lot on all this um, and um, in order to understand these kids, what they go through, I'm going to show you some visuals. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the screen. <laughs> if you can see this clearly, you will find that there's something wrong with the words over here. This will be how children with visual processing disorder see certain words. Okay, different children have different disorder. They will, some of them see it this way. Some of them see it this way. Again, there's nothing wrong with the screen. You can see this clearly, but you cannot see anything here. Some of them, they might see certain words like that. It's completely blur. It's not that they don't want to copy, but they just can't see it. They're not blind. They are not short-sighted. No matter what is the glasses that you give them, they still can't see because it's the processing disorder inside the brain. It's a neurological issue. Okay? They can also be facing issues like that. Wave. So when they copy, they might copy things wrongly, so they might miss the word many. So, so parents, fearful children, they might miss words just because they are at the trough, or they might miss words because they are at the peak. Okay? So, these are the issues that your child is facing. And you see, this is not a matter of focus and you can do it. You can't. It's just neurological. Nothing wrong with your screen again. You might see the word spinning. This is what some of your children might be seeing. These are visual processing disorder symptoms, okay? Again, I'm not trying to show you any words. What I'm trying to show you is the gaps. They see rivers in words. They just part. The words just part. And they can't, they can't make sense of things. They will have very, very difficult uh, time trying to read, okay? Again, this is neurological. It's not a matter of you focus, you'll be able to do it. If I hit you a lot more times, you'll be able to do it. You can't. It's neurological. Another one, this will be um, an easy problem to fix. Why do I say that? Because there is a direct treatment for this. If your children actually see different tones because of um, astigmatism or even just even astigmatism, the glasses doesn't help, they will still see shades like that. Okay, this is easy to fix because there is actually this treatment that prescribes color lenses Okay, it can be glasses or it can be just filters that you go, uh, you go to popular to buy, these clear filters. Okay, like transparency, you know, in our era, we use transparencies. No, there's, there's a transparency, so I'm not sure where you can get these filters. Okay, there will be this uh, a clear, clear films. You can definitely buy them from popular. Uh, what colour? The thing is that you don't know, I don't know, only the child knows. Okay, only the child can play uh, around with the colours and see which one suits them the best, which one helps them read the best, okay? So in terms of problems like that, if you put a layer of filter over, the colours will change and make it more contrasting for their eyes and then they can start reading better. This is how these filters work, okay? So this is just one treatment. And then a treatment for visual processing disorder for seemingly careless children which actually is not because of their carelessness, it's because of their visual processing disorder. You can actually help them by using a special font. Okay, so um, this special font, I need to pre-warn you first, or rather I need to give you the correct advice first. Uh, there, is no, there is only one research so far that actually proves that this font 
works. So why do I should still share it with you? Because uh, research are statistically um, proven uh, articles. So there are people, through word of mouth and all, they actually say phones work. So it really depends on um, whether you want to try it, how desperate you are and how accessible these tools are to you. And uh, it might work for your children. Why not? Just try it. Okay, so this is the one of the phones that I, I, I recommend because it's free. There are phones that are actually uh, um, uh, phones that can help visual processing disorders that will cost money. Okay, so how to find this kind of phone online? You can just type dyslexic phones. Okay, this word is very familiar, dyslexia. I know a lot of you will know, dyslexic, dyslexia. My child does, uh, doesn't have reading problem. My child doesn't flip E this way. My child's D and D doesn't have a problem. Uh, my child is not dyslexic, won't need this phone. No, okay. Visual processing disorder can be a cause of dyslexia, but children with visual processing disorder might not be dyslexic. Okay, and using this phone does not mean that your child is dyslexic. It does not mean, it just means that this phone can actually help. Because you see, you notice that this phone is actually bottom heavy and they are less symmetrical than most of those uh, normal phones that we use. It actually helps them organize uh, inside their mind how to process these letters because they look different. They are more contrasting, okay? So it does help for children with visual processing disorder. They need not be dyslexic to use this phone. Okay? So uh, you can copy this uh, down. What are the other strategies? If I, uh, because phones is only used for computers, right? And I don't produce worksheets for my kids. So what do I do? If you're a specialist teacher, you can do this. If you're a teacher, if you have kids like that, you might want to download this phone. Uh, if you're a parent, what you can do is you can teach the kids to type, okay? Or you can uh, help them uh, because typing actually helps them to learn spelling as well. And when they use these fonts, it's actually easier for them to see what they have written, right? So these are the things that you can use in terms of fonts. Notice that the subsequent slides are used all the same fonts. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if you feel it looks better. But for children with uh, visual processing disorder, they might think this looks better. They might, okay? So fonts doesn't work on 100%. It's just one suggestion. Other strategies that you can use, ruler. Because remember, kids, they actually see words that go up and down. Okay, using a ruler can help cover the rest of the words so that the words will fall in place a little bit more nicely. Again, depending on what they see. Some of them, if they see the spiral one, ruler won't help. Okay, if they see different colors, the contrast is, is gone, ruler won't help. What else can help? Highlighter. Because highlighter actually brings out the different, different words, different, different points. It brings their attention to it. It helps them to make the words less spiraling. Okay, so again, it is very specific for different children. So try as many different strategies as possible. Again, jigsaw puzzle comes out again. Highly recommended jigsaw puzzles for your kids to train visual processing disorder as well. Ball games. Why ball games? Okay, what am I talking about? Ball games as in like basketball, um, even badminton, um, even juggling. Okay, if you can. I think uh, during the CCB period, maybe we can all try how to juggle. <laughs> it will take out a lot of time. Three balls. Why? Because it actually encourages a lot of hand-eye movement. Okay, hand-eye coordination, because when you see where the ball is, it actually trains the eye okay, by looking at where the ball goes. So this is very good eye training. If not, just uh, maybe throw a little bit to your child. Okay, your child must be able to track the ball's movement and catch it. Okay, so for your really young kids, you can try balloons. Just catching balloons will help. Uh, so the, a little bit older, you can use beach ball. The movement is a bit, small, uh, is a bit slower than the real basketball or volleyball. The smaller the ball, the better the training. So you go from big balls all the way to small balls, faster reaction. Ping pong, table tennis is the smallest that you can go. It requires the highest dexterity. Okay, so ping pong ball will be the, the very last, the, the highest level <laughs> that you can use. Okay, so juggling, highly recommended during this CCB period. Otherwise, please encourage your children to go out to pick up a sport. 
Spawn the difference games. I think you under completely can imagine why I recommend that. Okay, because it, it stretches on the ability to see differences. It stretches on the eye movement to here, 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 here. You see that notice a lot of uh, as long as it's a lot of uh, eye movement, a lot of eye training, all this will help for visual processing disorder children. Okay, so where's Waldo? Okay, that uh, little little figure on a huge picture um, and he's hidden somewhere. Where's Waldo? Okay, those would be very good eye training for kids with visual processing disorder. What else can they do in school? They can, for example, for English, by reading, okay, reading, read again and again, using their fingers. I know a lot of you might think that reading using the fingers is a bad habit. Actually, it is not. It actually encourages speed reading. It is something that we teach in our centre as well. When children speed read, we are not encouraging them to, um, to any how read. In fact, speed reading enhances on comprehension. Okay? There is a technique for doing speed reading which we teach the kids in our ILAC program. If you are interested, you can find out more from our website. Um, reading using the finger helps a lot. Okay? Otherwise, the ruler will come in. Otherwise, the highlighter will come in. Otherwise, the color filter can also come in. Many, many different ways to help your kids reduce on carelessness. Okay? Elimination is one way as well. There's always four options. Cancel, cancel, cancel. The last one is the answer. Okay? Math, recount. Usually, when you tell the kids, hey, you don't be so careless, you need to check your work, check your work. They do not actually understand what does the word check your work means. <laughs> okay? So sometimes when I tell the kids, check your work, then they'll say, okay, I checked already. So I ask them, how did you check? They will say, oh, I, I see, lo, I, I done every single one. I was like, what? <laughs> That's not checking. So you see, a lot of children are not taught how to check. So you need to tell them specifically. When mommy tells you to check, when teacher tells you to check, it means you need to go down to every single question again, work backwards. Okay, meaning, for example, how many apples did this farmer have? So, if your answer is the farmer has 20 apples, is it correct? So, you work backwards. Okay, just now I minus in order to get the 20. So, now I should plus it back to get the 20 and see if I get back the original question. Okay, so that is what work backwards means. For uh, older kids, they can work backwards. They definitely can understand that. But for younger kids, they might not understand what is work backwards. So you might need to tell them, okay, you recount, you read the question again, and then you recount, see whether you have done anything wrong, check the numbers, make sure all the transfers are correct. Six is six, not six become nine, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so you need to really show them how to check. Science, again, rework. Read the whole question again, eliminate because they are un option one, two, and three. Usually, science is irritating because teachers like to set questions like, which one is false? Which one is not true? <laughs> Meaning the same thing. Or they will say, which one does not belong? Which one should be included? Which one should be excluded? You see, these are very, um, very difficult words for the kids to process, especially if they, they have visual processing disorder. They might overlook, they might see not true as true. You know, they might, they, might, they might misread a lot of times. So, these are the, the things that um, science question might, might lead a visual, that a visual processing disorder child will face in science. So, therefore, to rework is a very important thing. To eliminate, to highlight on the word, if it's not true, make sure they underline the word not. Okay? So, and, and especially answer the keywords, make sure that spelling is correct. Okay, use a ruler or even they can cover parts of the spelling to check phonetically. So, for example, like condensation, four sounds, correct? So, they can cover, they can see how to spell con, C-O-N, and then how to spell den, D-E-N, and then say S-A, and then shen, T-I-O-N. They can cover the words part by part, okay? When they cover the word, it will appear to them in a very concise way. They can focus their attention on it and make sure they spell it right, okay? If they don't do that, the whole word looks like a chunk to them and they will not be able to check their mistake even if they have spelled A and S the other way around. They wouldn't be able to see it. Okay? It's not that they're careless, it's not that they're not focused, they just can't see it. Okay? So remember this, um, this very, uh, very important, very, very inherent thing in your child. Let's be very, very understanding if your child is really facing these issues. We need new strategies, we need very pertinent strategies to help them solve very pertinent uh, problems that they are going through. Okay? I hope today's session really helped you to uh, understand 
more about how kids are careless and why they are careless and what are the strategies available out there that you can use to help them. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at our Facebook page. If there's anything, uh, so you are the parent that tested... Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if there's questions for you from you. If you have, do let me know. I can see your questions over here. Just wait a while. Any questions? Okay, no worries. If you have any questions, you can just uh, type them into this uh, same thread over here. We will be publishing this on our Facebook Live. Um, so, a Facebook feed, I mean. So, uh, I will go in and I will try to answer your questions as much as possible if you have any afterwards. Okay? Oh, there is one question. Uh, I can't see it. Okay. Okay, I'll see you soon again uh, next Friday at 9 p.m. On the same place, we'll be having another parenting talk. If you have a topic in mind that you would like me to cover, do text me. Let me know on our Facebook and uh, I will try to see if it's suitable for the talk. Okay, see you. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.